The fighting type is one of my favorite Pokemon types. It's home to many fan favorite staples of the game, such as Lucario, Blaziken, Machamp, etc, etc. It does have three weaknesses, but it's the only type capable of dealing super effective hits against normal types. And today, I'll be attempting to Nuzlocke Pokemon Scarlet using only new fighting type Pokemon. Go on with the old and in with the new. And man, some of these new ones are just straight up badass. The rules will be in the description, and if you enjoy the video while you're down there, why not hit subscribe? Because we've got plenty of bangers on the way. So to begin this game, I name myself Sir Fist a lot, because that's what we're going to be doing today. A lot of fists everywhere. So we head downstairs when this old dude breaks in and tries to seduce my mother. Okay, I'm out of here. I've got better things to do than watch whatever the heck is going on here. Like, pick my starter. And there's only one real good choice here, but we're not allowed to pick it. So I pick the duck instead. Yeah, we have to use the duck. I named this dude Fister, and we set out on our adventure. Oh, hey, Sir Fisterlot. What are you doing here? I'm your new stepdad. Mother f Nimona, my favorite rival of all time, picks up the dino, and now it's time to battle. Is Nimona my stepsister now? Are these guys related? I don't even know. Of course, we crush this thing with two water guns. Great, Mum's kicked me out of the house now. So off towards school we go. On the way there, we do find fighting Pokemon number two and three. First off is Pormy, which we named Pounder. And then we run into this gigantic beast, but it looks a little sick. So I give it my final home-cooked meal, and it looks like it's starting to feel a little bit better. Put me down. And next up is the Flamingo, without the end, who's named Taekwondo because it's a Flamingo, and Taekwondo is like a fighting thing, so... You you, you get it. Anyway, since Clavel moved in, I'm living in the dorm rooms at school, but to get there we have to beat Nimona. I trained up Pormi a little and used Work Up three times and one shot both her Pokemon. Well, my new stepsister gives me a goal to beat all the gyms and this guy tells me about some big boys and some hacker hacks my phone and blackmails me. Apparently they have some video of my mum and Clavel on their phone and I don't want that shit out there, so I better get to work. Uh, stepsis, what is going on with your face? Yeah, her eyebrows do be clipping through her face. So first up, we go and cross the bug gym with Flamigo, terrestrializing and one-shotting every single one of her Pokemon with Peck. For this early in the game, Flamigo is a beast. With an attack stat of 115, this thing cracks skulls. And after Gym 1, our starter evolved, and we found the fourth addition to the team, Mankey. Uh, so first a lot, the Mankey's not a new Pokemon. Shh, you'll see, you'll see. By the way, next week, me and my friend Adam will be streaming our Soul Link Live, a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So if you want to catch it live, consider subscribing and you'll get notified when we go live. Oh, and before I scare any of you, if you miss the streams, don't worry because there will be a video of it eventually. So stay tuned for that. So following the cook's instruction to the location of the big boy, I get ready to test my strength against the gigantic crab. Cloth is quite manageable with the team I have, and Quaxwell takes it down with two water guns. Fight 2 goes just as well, and this dude makes me a sandwich as a reward. But unfortunately, that fat ass from earlier comes on over and just eats it all up. So to summarize, I've got this fat thing that eats my food, I've been kicked out of my house, and my mother has a sex tape that I'm trying to prevent from leaking. What a great life. So onto the next gym I go. Of course Flamigo is still super effective against this gym, and so as easy as the last one, we hoist this guy up to the top of the windmill and drop his ass from the top. Ah! Flamigo one-shots both Petalil, Smoliv, and then Sudowoodo uses a grass move for some reason, allowing Flamigo to get two plucks in a row, and it goes down. Time to take on the next Titan, I'd say. But before we do that, I want to evolve my Pormo into Pormo, which is one of the most lazy evolutions ever. And to do that, I just sit here on top of this Pokemon Center and twiddle my thumbs, and do this for some reason. And after he'd done 1,000 steps, I slap a candy on it, and boom! It grew like 2 inches taller, and now we're ready to smash the Titan. I'm really concerned for this Titan, since it's a flying type, which is obviously strong against us, but with Pormut already fully evolved, hopefully it won't go too bad. I hit it with a Thundershock dealing about 30% damage, as it lands a super effective wing attack, and lowers us to about 55%, meaning we could take one more wing attack before getting taken out. Fortunately, it goes for a rock throw, meaning I get two more shocks in and take it out. What's scary about this fight is we didn't get the chance to heal in between. But fortunately, we managed to land the first two Thunder Shocks as Bombardier wastes a turn using Torment and Nackley misses his attack. 
It goes for Pluck the next turn, but we do survive on just 3 HP, allowing Pormot and Nackley to finish it off the following turn. You fat shit, I'm starving! Why, why do you keep eating my food? This better be worth it later. Yo, did you forget about the video? Oh, oh shit, yeah, let me get on that. So, head over to the first starbase we go. Ah, surface lot. Go get him, we need to get that video recovered. Who the heck are you? And why do you care? No reason, uh... So we destroy the 30 Pokemon in the base, and out comes the base booster himself, Giacomo. Leading with Pormot, he leads with Pornyard, one arm thrust later, and it goes down. And in comes the goddamn car. Unfortunately, this thing drops my attack on entrance, and my arm thrust does no damage. So I swap over to Mankey, getting in two low kicks before switching into Flamigo, and landing two more double kicks, taking down the car. Alright, can you delete the video now? Nope, you've got four more brasses to go. Alright, let's head over to Gym 3. What the heck are you doing here? You got me kicked out of my house and now you're stalking me? So I complete the gym challenge and thinking about this fight, I realize how underprepared I am for the fight against the leader's Miss Magius. So I spend some time hunting for the specific version exclusive bull. When we actually stumble across this. Oh! What the? I... Um... What? I was looking, I'm looking for a fl flame bread Tauros and that is not a flame bread Tauros, but that is something. <laughs> but a little while later, we do eventually stumble upon the fire bread Tauros that we were looking for. We name it Horny because I mean, come on, look at it. And now we can take on the gym. I own the gym leader's first Pokemon is a Wattrel and Pounder the Pormut knocks it out in one Thunderbag. Belly Ball in next goes down in two digs, and out comes Luxio. Thankfully, one dig takes it out, and finally in comes Hermes Magius. And since it has Levitate, I swap over to our new horny boy and terastalize it, as she terastalizes her Pokemon as well. The Light Bulb confuses me, but thankfully we hit through it, taking it to half, and the following turn we take it out without taking any damage ourselves. And we earn badge number three. Let's turn our attention back to the Starbase. Mila is my next target, and she's a fire specialist. Leading with Torkoal, it sets up the sun, so I lead with Pormod again. It took two digs to take down, but using dig, we stall out two extra turns, and in comes the car. But with Pormod weak, I swap over to Horny, and we deal absolutely no damage as it lowers Taurus's health. I yet again swap over to Quaxwell, as Blazing Torque does no damage to us on entrance, and Aqua Cutter deals 25% damage. Quaxwell then dodges two of its moves, the sun fades, and two Aqua Cutters later, it goes down. Alright, only three more to go, and then the video gets erased. Taurus then takes out the next Titan almost as easily as Rotom did in the last video, which if you haven't seen, you should totally go check out. And a few terrestrialized flame charges later, it goes down. On to the next gym. Oh, you want me to deliver this guy's wallet to him? Yeah, sure, I I'll do that. One week later. Hey yo, I was told you have my wallet. Uh, no, but I am here to battle you. His water team stands no chance against my Pikachu clone. His Veluza is first to fall to a Thunderfang, and in comes Wog Trio. I swapped over to Mankey, who dropped it to low health, and we get lowered as well, as I swap over to Flamigo and finish it off. Finally, in comes his Crabominable, and we land the Thunderfang, almost one-shotting it, but luckily we land the Paralysis, and it doesn't get the chance to attack us. With Sandstorm raging, it manages to take it out, and we earn us our next gym badge. See ya! And thanks for the wallet! I'm gonna need this to pay for the meal to battle the next gym leader. On our way there though, Mankey evolved into Primate, and Primate evolved into Annihilate. One of the most badass new Pokemon they've made. We also got Quaxwell to evolve into Kukwavel, which is like a flamboyant duck with all the sass of like James Charles or something. And already knowing the secret recipe, I waltz on inside, place my order, and prepare to battle. Larry, you're up! The normal gym shouldn't be too much of a problem, but his last Pokemon Star Raptor could be quite concerning, since it is a flying type. Up first is the worst Australian Pokemon Kamala, which goes down in one cross chop. The Dunsparce in next shares the Koala's pain, falling in one hit, and finally the bird appears. Annihilate tanks an Aerial Ace, and cross chop gets it to roughly 30% health. Switching over to Quaval, we tank an entrance hit, and outspeed it the following turn, and take it out. Why am I getting these badges again? Oh yeah, for this girl. <laughs> Seeing my skills in action though, she wants to battle me again. And when you look at that, all of them destroyed super easily. I do go slightly out of order now, so I can pick up my last team member a little bit earlier. And to do that, I'll need to defeat the second last Titan, who is way over leveled in comparison to our Pokemon. 
Fortunately, I brought along Flamboyant Fist up, but Great Tusk does outspeed me. This is bad because even if I deal a lot of damage, now it'll take me out next turn. But since I used Aqua Step, I get a speed boost as well as deal an incredible amount of damage, letting me outspeed it the following turn, taking it out. Now that was close. Surely I'm not dumb enough to go straight into the second fight. Yup, Sophistalot indeed is. Fortunately for me, he attacks Arvinscope Villain and we take it out without an issue. Nope, I've learned my lesson. You ain't getting this shit. I'm hungry still because I didn't even get to eat the dish I ordered at the restaurant earlier. But for those of you who don't know, one day after you defeat any Titan Pokemon, if you head back to the location, you will find the depowered, untitanified Pokemon. But I had some time to kill between that, so I headed up the icy cliffs and into the beautiful ice town, home to the ghost gym leader. Is it just me or is it getting hot? Nah, that's just me. So fist a lot. Man, that was cringe. This is a double battle, and it's one of only a couple compulsory ones in the whole game, which is such a letdown. She leads with Vanette and Mimikyu, both of which Shadow Punch first turn, hitting both Taurus and Annihilate. This does boost Annihilate's Rage Punch damage, and after Taurus breaks its disguise, it goes down to the Rage Fist. I terrestrialize Annihilate into a fighting type to get rid of its ghost weakness and take down Bennett with another Rage Fist. Horny drops Houndstone to half with its signature move, Raging Bull, and in comes her ace, Toxtricity. Unfortunately for it though, one Rage Fist is enough to one-shot it and we outspeed Houndstone the next turn. Seems Annihilate's coming in handy. And with that done, we can head back to the Great Tusk Titan to find he's been shrunken down. We catch him, name him Ram Ranch, and with that we've caught every possible Pokemon for this run. But can we make it all the way from here to the end of the game? And beat AI Sada? Uh, only time will tell. We have some incredibly difficult fights coming up, so I'm a little unsure of how it'll go. Well, except for the next one, which isn't hard at all, because I forgot about it and this is way under my current level. That's the Poison Team star member Atticus, who we destroy his whole team with just a few stomping tantrums. From here, we can head over to the most horrifying gym of all, the Psychic Gym. A high level gym full of Pokemon super effective against every single one of my Pokemon. To get to the battle, we have to beat Nimona again, and we get real angry about it. I'm lightheaded. I did have a plan for this fight, however, and that was to use Annihilate. Yep, that, that's it pretty much. Hopefully it works out. Her first Pokemon for Rugeroff, however, instantly throws a wrench in the plan, as it's a normal type. We end up taking it down with two cross chops, but we take a decent amount of damage. Gardevoir next, our Rage Fist does increase damage and one shot it. Weak now, against her Espathra, I swap over to Ram Ranch and Terrestrialize Ground to remove my weakness to Psychic. One knockoff later, we take it out and in comes her final Pokemon, Florgis, who goes down to just one knockoff as well. Alright, the first of two really scary battles is complete, but in between the next difficult fight at the very base, tragedy does strike. Firstly, I head over to the final gym to meet up with Grusha. I don't know how people thought he was a girl, seems pretty obvious to me, but anyway, it's time to take on his ice team. Fortunately, my whole team is super effective against him, and we also have the fire type Tauros, which is going to be great against his first Pokemon Frostmoth. So, I terrestrialize fire and hit with a quad effective flame charge, buffing our speed. His bear tick in next goes down to one Raging Bull, and in comes the big boy Psy Titan. It is a very chunky boy, however, and lives Raging Bull. That's when it turns around and uses Liquidation on us. We do manage to tank it, and we're able to take it out the following turn. This leaves just his Ice Altaria, who's knocked out by one more Raging Bull. Sweet! Now heading over to the final Titan of the game, Dodonzo goes down first time, no problem. Thanks to Pormor and two Thunderfangs. As we flinch it, meaning it doesn't even get a chance to hit us. Pounder in the next fight, however, takes an absurd amount of damage from Aquatel, but deals it in return with a Thunderfang. Fearing its life, I swap over to Quickwavel and finish the job. Phew! Glad that's over with. What do you mean it's not over? Oh, we just have to beat this little cute baby sushi fish? Okay, that'll be easy. I was really not expecting that there. Well, shit. Okay. Annihilate does manage to take it down in the end, but at what cost? I was planning to use him for the fairy base! Oh, now what are we gonna do? Nice job! We just lost my freaking electric Pokemon! Now, what about that is nice? Huh? Nothing. Well, at least this is the last time I have to feed this dragon dog thing. This takes us to the next horrific fight against the fairy base. Oh my god. Oh my god. Shiny jump up. 
Wait, that's the second shiny in this run. Fairy, of course, being super effective against all my Pokemon, and losing Pormot, things were not looking in my favor. Breaching the defenses, we come to blows with Ortega. What a little pimp! Look at him, he's all styled out, I like it. Leading with Azumarill, I lead with Tauros, who I taught Trailblaze to. Expecting this to do more damage, I get it quite low, but it does lower Tauros to red with an Aquatel. I swap a Vidical Quavel to tank the next Aquatel, but it misses and I knock it out with an Acrobatics. He sends in Wigglytuff, so I swap over to Annihilate, as I taught it Gunk Shot for super effective damage. This lands and one-shots it. Dash Bun in next, I swap to Great Tusk and Terrastalize. Unfortunately, Earthquake just barely doesn't take it out, and we get our attack dropped before we finish it off. The car comes in next, and we deal far less damage than I wanted to with an Earthquake because of that attack drop previously, and the following turn the car hits me with a Magical Torque, which does decent damage and also confuses me. Great Tusk hits through the confusion however, and I decide to risk the swap over to Annihilate, who takes way too much damage on entrance, and also gets confused. So I swap back to Ram Ranch with my attack stat returned to normal, and it confuses me AGAIN on entrance! This shit's so annoying! But we do manage to hit through it and get it to the red. We tank the attack and now we have to pray we don't hit ourselves in confusion. Come on Ram Ranch, come on! Oh. I cannot believe we made it through that fight without losing a Pokemon. This leaves just one star base and we can finally put this blackmail case to rest. That is of course the fighting base. And what ended up happening was I taught Flamigo Acrobatics, terrestrialized it, and one shot all of its Pokemon. Except the car who took two here to take down. Blah blah, blackmail person says come to meet me at school at night and uh, they'll delete it or whatever. Come on Clive, let's go. But we have some time to kill before sundown, so I decided it's time for Sir Fistlock and his fighting type friends to take on the league. Sir Fistlock doesn't have time for super quizzes, I'm here to fight. Coming into this fight, I had to be very well prepared, so I did a bunch of raid battles to get Terra Shards to change the Terra type of both Kukwavel and Annihilate. Kukwavel becoming an Ice type, which is really going to help me in this fight. Rika here is a ground specialist, which is weak to our ice. She leads with Wish Cash, which takes two ice spinners to go down, and seeing an opportunity for a super effective attack, she sends in Camera Up. What a foolish mistake that was, as one Aqua Cutter does take it out, and she sends in Donphan. However, my prehistoric Donphan is way stronger than taking it down. Doug Trier goes down to another Earthquake, and in comes Clodsire. Her fun on one is defeated with ease, however, thanks to another two Earthquakes, as it deals barely any damage in retaliation. Next, of course, is the Steel Specialist, which is a... What? This... How is this girl an Elite Four member? She's like six. Well, no wonder this one was easy. Great Tusk one-shots the first few Pokemon with Earthquake, and Tauros handles the rest. Larry, however, is a complete different beast. He is obviously super effective against us, so leading with Tropius, I lead with Quavel and Terrastalize it to an Ice type. I build my speed stat for a turn, predicting the sunny day, which ends up happening and wastes its turn, allowing to build my speed and get off an Ice Spinner. Next up is his Staraptor, which we outspeed, but it does drop my attack with Intimidate. Fortunately, Ice Spinner still does manage to one-shot it, and I swap over to Annihilate to deal with Altaria and Oricorio. This leaves just the scariest of the lot, a flying fighting type. You know him, you love him, it's Flamigo. And it knows a bunch of super strong moves. It has both Brave Bird and Close Combat, which have the potential to one-shot any Pokemon on my team. So the only two Pokemon on my team that have any hope of defeating it is Annihilate and Terrastalize Kukwavel. So I swap back to Kukwavel, preferring a non terrestrialized move hitting me and praying it doesn't take me out. So I go for Ice Spinner and it outspeeds me, and it hits me with the Close Combat. But, Quaquavel toughs it out and finishes off the Flamigo with an Ice Spinner. That was close, but now it's time for the Dragon Specialist. And this wasn't too bad, as Quaquavel takes down Noivern, Great Tusk takes down Haxorus, and Dragalgi. Dragalg? Dra Dragalgi? Drag these nuts across your face. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Flamigo then takes out Flapple with an Acrobatics, leaving just the back's Calibar. I swap over to Annihilate for that, and we got it to half with a single Ice Punch. So we take it out next turn, if we live this. Do not die, Annihilate! I believe in you! Glaive Rush. Okay. Please tank you the hit. Yes! Annihilate! You beast! Plus, we do increase damage to Glaive Rush. Mm, let's go! Alright, it's time for the first champion fight. 
Go, Fist Star! Yeah! And against her, Espathra, I terrestrialize my Annihilate to a Ghost type and take it out with a Rage Punch. My favorite new Pokemon in Next sadly falls in a single Brick Break from Great Tusk. Uh, I still love you, King Gam, but don't worry. And so in comes Go Go. A Raging Bull, of course, one shots it, leading to the arrival of Avalog, which is far more bulky. It tanks the first Raging Bull and Earthquakes me in retaliation. Fortunately, we do survive the Earthquake and take it out the following turn. Havalooza then falls to the Fist Star's Rage, leaving Perglamora, who's knocked out by a single Earthquake. That was easy. That didn't even take the whole day. The sun's still shining. I guess we have time to go meet up with Arvin first. And when we do, he wants to battle. But I gave him the old 1-2 Fist combo, and now we can finally head over to the school. Oh hey Clive, nice to see ya. It's time for me to bring this little performance to an end? What do you mean? Allow me to reveal my true identity. Haha! -ha. What the hell? What's my stepdad doing here? Oh my god! No wonder he was so invested in getting that video removed. Wait, you're Cassiopeia? You're gonna expose your own wife's video? Upon defeating this disgrace, we find out he isn't even Cassiopeia, and we indeed find her in the schoolyard. It's time for me to reveal myself. Who the heck are even you, and why do you, a child, have this video? Doesn't matter, I'ma beat your ass and you're gonna delete that video for good. Her team is full of evolutions, and Great Tusk one-shots her first Pokemon Umbreon with a Brick Break. Against Vaporeon, Quiquavel takes it out, and Great Tusk destroys Jolteon. Flamigo finishes off Leafeon, and Flareon gets hit by another Earthquake. Sylveon then goes down to two more Earthquakes, and give me that phone now! What do you mean there wasn't even a video? Mother you tricked me into taking down all of Team Star for nothing, and I inadvertently spent all this time with Clavel? God damn you, Cassiopeia. Alright, I'm gonna go take out this frustration on my stepsister, Nimona. Uh... Uh, uh. She sends out Lycanroc to start with, and I terrestrialize Ram Ranch. It takes down Lycanroc with an earthquake, and she sends in Gudra. For that, I swap over to Kukwavel, who lands a critical ice spinner, one-shotting it. Hormod in next. Man, don't remind me of our fallen brethren. It lands a critical close combat, lowering Ram Ranch below half. But we take it out with an earthquake. The Dunsparce in next survives the first brick break, but wastes a turn coiling, letting me finish it off the following turn. Her second last Pokemon is Orthworm, which I take out with another Brick Break, leaving just her Skeledurge. We swap over to Kukwavel for that, and we manage to outspeed it, knocking it below half with an Aqua Carter, and tank the Croc's hit, letting me finish it the next turn. Oh, it's... Oh, stay away from me, <laughs> Demon. Stay away from me, Demon. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but wait, we're not done yet. Yes, we've completed all the main story paths, but we still have the final chapter to beat. That involves a lengthy descent into Area Zero, battles with a bunch of ancient Pokemon, learning about a time machine, unlocking the door to said time machine, battling more ancient Pokemon, and to the final battle of the run. This is with the Run Slayer, Shiny Destroyer, and Super Hot Milf. I mean, what? How did that get in there? I, I, I mean... AI Sada. This fight is really tough, and to beat it with just 5 Pokemon is going to be super difficult. She leads with Slitherwing and I send in Flamigo. One Acrobatics does knock it out, as it's quite effective. Now this is interesting child, do you actually understand ancient Pokemon weakness? Yeah, I looked at the wiki. <laughs> For the Screamtail, I send in Annihilate and Terrastalize it. We tank a Play Rough and knock it out with a Rage Fist. She sends in Fluttermane to counter me, but I thought I'd be able to outspeed and knock it out, but sadly that isn't the case, as it outspeeds me and one-shots me with a Shadow Ball. I don't have anything that's super effective against it now, so I send in Flamigo. Oh fuck, it has Thunderbolt! Oh, well. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Good job. Good job. Good job. Flamigo? Flamigoat? Am I right? <laughs> Against Sandy Shocks, I send in Ram Ranch and one shot with an Earthquake. Brute Bonnet up next is an easy knock as well, as I swap over Taurus, aiming to use every Pokemon in this final battle. Raging Bull just doesn't one shot it, allowing it to get an attack in, but we do tank that, which lets us finish it off the next turn. This leaves just her Roaring Moon, and I swapped over to Kukwavel and go for the Ice Spinner. Okay, we live. Okay, good. Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip. Okay, okay. 
This barely doesn't take it out, and we get crit and retaliation. Damn, that sucks. But fortunately, Great Tusk can tank the next Dragon Claw and finish it off with a super effective Brick Break. But it's not over yet. AI Sada goes sicko mode and destroys my last remaining Pokemon by locking their Pokeballs. But what she doesn't know is I've had a 7th secret fighting type on my team this whole run, and it's time for it to make its debut. Come on out, Coridon! And after dealing some damage with its signature move collision course, we build up our damage and terastalize. And with one Terra Blast, we beat the opposing Coridon, winning us the final battle and the run. Hey, let's go! So yes, it is possible to beat Pokemon Scarlet using only new fighting Pokemon. And if you guys enjoyed the video, hit like, hit subscribe, and uh, yeah, bye for now. I forget how the Ed Sheeran song goes, but... Nah, 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 I wear a mask for hours. Fuck, that's dream. God damn it, they sound the same, whatever.